with us as we help you plan for the big events in your neighborhood. That's right. The Weather Channel has you covered here from coast to coast. Dr. Bostel also here to help break down what is fueling severe threats across the plains and into the deep south. Yeah, but first, the heavy rain and storms um, that we have in Texas won't help crews trying to contain an oil spill in the water around Galveston. A tugboat hit a bridge heading to Pelican Island. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Now that rain is now headed to the same areas hit hard by flooding earlier this month. You may remember some of these scenes here of the water here as far as the eye can see really surrounding homes and businesses as well. It's not just Texas that will see a dreary end to the week. Today's big deal will away, although we have the hazards for severe weather. So um, let's look at all of it. This is a stormy forecast. It starts for you uh, tomorrow and we'll see it go throughout the entire day. A little more hit or miss in the first part of the day, but we get into pretty widespread thunderstorms. It could drop some heavy rain and some severe hazards right through the afternoon and in through the evening. The area to watch tomorrow includes southeast Louisiana, central and southern Mississippi, parts of Alabama as well, all the way down to the Gulf Coast. It'll be what's left over from today's storms and continuing overnight, but then resurging throughout the day with an increase in thunderstorm activity. So the parameters are there. We've got the fronts in particular. We'll be watching what happens is that warm front kind of lifts north in that area. We're going to see a lot of moisture. So dew points will be running high. That will help add to the instability and buoyancy of the air. Plus some stronger winds will help organize those thunderstorms. So we think especially along the Gulf Coast and then just north of there is where we really could see that risk for severe weather. That does include communities like Lake Charles, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, up towards Jackson and Mobile. We do have all hazards. There's a three on the Torcon when uh, we look ahead to tomorrow's forecast. When there's a three on the Torcon, it means isolated tornadoes are possible. Tornado watches could be issued, so it'll be that kind of day as we get you uh, through your Friday. It's not just the threat of tornadoes, though. We have winds and hail, and hail could be quite large, too. So two inch or size greater hail. We're actually going to see that threat start today in Texas, as Greg talked about. And then we'll see that evolve tomorrow into parts of Louisiana, including across central Louisiana into central Mississippi. Jackson may be one of the cities that has to watch out for that. But I think especially down towards the Gulf Coast, that's kind of where all, all of the ingredients come together the most. In the forecast, this is a model forecast. It may not look exactly like this, but we'll give you a sense of what's going on for your Friday, starting the day with some thunderstorms. And we'll see that out there with one batch coming through. Then that could bring a really big heavy rain threat, but then that saturates the ground and we see new thunderstorms moving out of Texas into Louisiana, Lake Charles, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Mobile, all could be dealing with some really heavy rain come Friday night. And of course, that risk for severe weather. Alex? Going to be looking at showers coming in Baltimore. Oh, tough timing. Your forecast is for Friday night into Saturday and Saturday night with some shower chances. Now, it does look like earlier in the day is wetter than later, but still rain is around and it's been a wet stretch. This is how much we've had over the past uh, seven days here across the Northeast, Southeast Connecticut, Central Pennsylvania, Southern Virginia, Indianapolis area. So many pockets of more than three or four, even five inches of rainfall just in the past week. And we're about to get more. So we are finding showers this morning out there across Wisconsin. Showers have been really steady out here with that east wind coming in to southeastern New England. What a yucky day in Boston and down through Providence. We've got showers moving to northern Connecticut too. Um, Hartford, you're getting rain this morning. This, this shower activity here into Wisconsin has been moving along, but still slowly. And so we've got showers out there across central Wisconsin. Dry at the moment in Minneapolis and Fargo. Dry into Green Bay for now. But this front is going to be a weather maker. We'll watch for that today some showers into Iowa and Illinois. That'll be marching east as a rainmaker. Also, that low pressure that's out there, it's going to stick around for a little bit longer, but it does move out. But then it gets replaced by the front and all the weather that it brings getting into your weekend. So showers here up and down the eastern seaboard as we get you into your Saturday. Alex. Well, Florida, thinking about before even purchasing mm -hmm. a home, what's the landscape like and what are the opportunities for potential flooding? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, no doubt. And that, of course, factors into whether you need to buy flood insurance, you know, yeah. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Something you should do right now, kind of leading into hurricane season is looking at that. We're going to talk more about it today on the show here. You can vote in our poll and send your comments, any pics or video with us using the hashtag YesTV. Some challenges there, right? Right. Well, you can go to Thread, send us your comments, and vote in our poll. And you can also share your pics and video with us using the hashtag YesTV. Beautiful water. I mean, when you when you look at that scene, you're like, yes, take take me, uh, take me there. But then you think about it, it's like, oh, it felt like 115 yesterday afternoon. We do have a couple of thunderstorms in the area. You can see around Fort Myers, a few showers, some of them moving all the way across to the east coast too. Now. 
they're very few and far between. There's not a lot. It's a weak front that's pressing down. So we, it's possible we get into a few more thunderstorms today, but they're not going to be as widespread and prolific as we had yesterday across the central part of the peninsula. But still, there's a chance. This is a look at the forecast model going through this afternoon. Scatter showers out there, but you notice it's not like one big batch pushing their way in like we saw yesterday. And it's hard to see how we're going to get a lot down towards Key West or even Miami today. There's just it's just so hot and humid and uh, with that stronger west wind kind of pushing things along. You don't even really get the sea breeze getting a chance to get going. But here in Key West 115 yesterday all time heat index from June 1985. Um, so you tied that and remember the last time that was set was June. So it's May. So yeah, we are um, certainly well ahead of schedule for this heat and humidity. We could see some more records today when it comes to actual temperature. Tallahassee going to 93. That's close to the record of 95. West Palm close. Key West close. 89 the forecast. 90 the record to beat. And the same thing in Miami. We're just one degree away from that record high temperature. Alex here. The rainy season is here. The heat is on. And we do have a, an extreme uh, risk, heat risk today in South Florida. So be safe out there with the heat. We're getting involved in this uh, wet pattern. Yeah, at least the eastern two thirds of the country. Right, right, Everyone right. is getting a drop. So the question is, why did the gator cross the road? Well, mm. perhaps well. So let's look at that and the risk of rainfall that we're going to have. A lot of rain is coming our way from Texas into Louisiana, even Mississippi and Alabama. This is the rain still to come through Saturday where we could see isolated areas of three to five plus inches of rainfall. Where we get training and where we get storms that just uh, sit there could really add up quite a bit here. I'm looking in particular, this is where the air is most saturated. It seems like up here across portions of northern Louisiana, uh, eastern Texas too. Um, and and this zone watching through tomorrow morning especially has the risk the high risk of flooding high risk days are very critical here there's not many of them every year and so on these days here almost always this is where we see a lot of damage the potential for loss of life we've got areas from Huntsville Texas where we've been dealing with river flooding we're going to expand that over towards Lufkin and Jasper and then into Louisiana again the atmosphere just so very saturated across this area we've had more than 20 inches of rain and a few isolated areas here over the past two weeks here and many spots this is widespread have had 10 12 15 inches of rainfall and that's why the river gauges are still running high we've got many spots in moderate flooding still some in major flooding down here and we are going to have to watch any additional rainfall that comes into this basin now at the moment we've got rain and thunderstorms out there moving across northern texas fort worth side of town getting worse than dallas right now but it's moving in the storms actually extend down towards san angelo you see thunderstorms that extend up 35 all the way to Oklahoma City and we do have a flash flood warning over here well west of Oklahoma City and south of the interstate but still this is one spot where we could be dealing with some water covering roadways this is a hazard you got to be ready for in the next two to three days because of how much rain we've got this includes parts of uh, Cato and Canadian counties it does include highway 281 and around the Binger area be cautious traveling out here this morning how does the head of the National Hurricane Center prepare for hurricanes? To find out, we went straight to the top. Here's NHC Director Dr. Michael Brennan with some simple advice that you can use right now. So we're helping you get ready for hurricane season ahead of it actually beginning. And today we want to talk about one of the hazards that occur with hurricanes, which is actually tornadoes. Yeah, one of those risks that we certainly face with these systems. We see it a lot when they uh, drive on in. So you got to be prepared for that here. Generally associated with the supercells that kind of rotate around in the sort of bands of these these uh, these tropical cyclones as we move ashore. But even outside of that, again, some of those big, the outer bands yeah. well away from the center, you can be dealing with these these uh, tornadic it, uh, it can happen well out ahead of a landfall, mm -hmm. actually, because it's those outer bands, usually in the right front quadrant, that may have some rotating storms. A lot of times they start as water spouts and then move on shore as tornadoes. Tend to be weak or mm -hmm. short. I always hate to say weak when it comes to tornadoes, but when it comes to the scale, they'll be on the lower end of the scale generally, and they tend to be short-lived. So the warnings are very quick. They're right on mm -hmm. you and then they're gone. So it's tough to warn, but you got to prepare for it and be ready to get into your safe zone immediately when those warnings do come out. You mentioned it being common in the right front quadrant of these systems. Uh, of course, land interaction playing a big role in that. All right, so we wanted to, uh, to talk more about just how strong these typical tornadoes are. You look at most of them being either uh, F0, EF0, 49% of them, EF1, 32%, uh, very few up at that stronger category of 
EF4 and 0% at EF5. Yeah, so there you go. You get to see the, the tend of the strengths tend to be again on the lower end of that scale. Now, when it comes to the seasons here for us, of course, average first date of dealing with a tropical storm in the Atlantic, it is June 20th. So still got some time with that, at least to get the average date. Hurricane mm -hmm. is August 11th and a major hurricane September 1st. So yes, the season begins what in what two weeks, I guess now, June 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, of course, have things happen before that. Yep. But on average, these are kind of the dates yeah. that we look for things. So we have some some time to prepare yeah. because there is nothing yeah. imminent right now in the Atlantic side here that so makes it a good time actually to prepare. And mm -hmm. speaking of preparing, that is what we're talking about today in our question. You know what's going on there at the airports as well as on the roads here for this Thursday. And as we look at where things stand here for us right now for the hubs across the country, all seems to be shaping up well, the exception down into Texas, Dallas mm -hmm. right now. Mm, boy, we've got some delays in mm -hmm. Dallas. Mm -hmm. How long are these delays? They are approaching three hours oh, around delays goodness. in place. So yeah, those flights trying to come in, it's not happening, averaging three hours. Yeah, Oof. so we're gonna keep an eye throughout the day there, all the airports in the Dallas area, also the Houston airport, San Antonio, Austin could see some delays. Also Chicago by the day's end, we may get to some delays. And Boston, so far so good, Yeah, but it wasn't, the weather's not good. Yeah, we'll watch out there. In fact, I think LaGuardia is having some uh, slight delays thanks to some low ceilings showing up there. But here into the middle of the country is going to be most active with showers and thunderstorms. Travel along 35, 45, 20, even a bit of 10. Ugh, could be tough at times as we head through the day. Rounds of storms with heavy rain. Mm -hmm. Potential for some severe in there as well. Well, you can stay weather aware on the roadways and home considering mm -hmm. some of these things that they want to make sure they have right. to be safe. Yeah, these are preparations well in advance Wait, of when right. we were kind of thinking right. about when we asked right. this question. We were more thinking about, well, the event is happening mm -hmm. today or tomorrow. Yeah. How would you prepare? But I really, I the love the answers. Extra, extra preparations. So we yeah. love that. Yeah. yeah, this is the beauty of these, uh, these questions of the day here. Mm -hmm. We learn so much. Uh, all right, well, keep those comments coming. Go to Threads. You can share your pics and video with us using the hashtag YesTV. And sun... getting through the floodwaters. You know, kind of like taking the big steps, you trying not to get the pants. That. No, you don't want to run. You could, my goodness. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for getting your day going with us as we help you plan for the big events in your neighborhood. Well, Weather Channel has you covered here from coast to coast. Uh, Dr. Postel also here to help break down what's uh, fueling some of the fear, severe threats across the plains and into the deep south. We've got a large area, yet again, that we're going to be facing that threat for severe yeah, weather. Yeah, we see an area from Texas Texas into Louisiana with storms that may go severe, but really all the hazards are there. Damaging winds, hail, tornadoes. We also could be looking at flooding rainfall yet again. Right. Yeah, we don't need that. Heavy rain yeah. and storms won't help crews trying to contain an oil spill that in uh, water there around Galveston. A barge being pushed by a tugboat hit a bridge heading to Pelican Island. Thankfully, though, no one was hurt. Yeah, that rain is now headed to the same areas hit hard by flooding earlier this month. You may remember these scenes of water as far as the eye can see surrounding homes and businesses. And we're worried about you know, the water coming from the sky back into these very spots. Mm -hmm. It's not just Texas that will see a dreary end to the week. Today's big deal will also focus on the heavy rain across the